basically alt tab over to this. All right, so let's talk about first person shooter stuff. Let's talk about how VR is going to interact with all this. Shall we? Thanks for the time and info. This is very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. It's what I do. I'm the VR citizen, as it were, so. And Star Citizen is a game about space. All right. At first glance, Star Citizen is a game about spaceships. But when you look under the surface, really building a How's universe that good? of the- is, is that good volume? Does that look good picture? They have better cameras in that first studio. Person. With trading and- I think this is because I'm in VR. I think, I think it's, there's no way, right? I think it's because I'm looking at a virtual desktop in VR and that resolution is- eh, I mean, I'm far, I'm like six feet away from my desk. I don't, do they not have a good camera for this segment? It says it's playing in 4K. Huh. Yeah, that's good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's go. Relating exploration and devastation. And over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring such character-related features as the new personal persistent hangers, new visor, lens, inventory, and shopping apps, the character customizer, which is so good, I'm just going to already tell you we're covering that next week. I and can't much wait for more. the character customizer. But before we leave our combat era of ISC, this week, we're sitting down with members of Team Nuck. We really got to get these new teams new names. <laughs> Uh, to discuss all the FPS combat related changes coming in Alpha 323. Let's find out more. As somebody, as somebody who owns a prop helmet, you don't realize exactly how bad they are for literally doing anything. Like talking, breathing, it gets condensation up all over the glass, it fogs up, you can't hear anything. Like, a movie prop helmet is exactly that. It is meant to look like a spaceship helmet or a stormtrooper helmet. It is not a, at all able to function like one properly. It doesn't fit properly. Like, everything about prop helmets is very underwhelming when you're actually wearing it and using it. But if it's on a wall, let me tell you or on a shelf somewhere, like I have over my computer. It's good shit. So, this guy's awesome. And, um, uh, what you call it, uh, full disclosure, I've already seen this. This isn't a reaction video. I don't think I can actually do reactions because, like we're about to see, I need to set up clips and show you how the game works now for everybody else, how it works now for us VR users with third-party mods, and then now we speculate with how it will work with full VR from CIG in the future. So that's basically what these come down to, is we don't react, I have to physically show. Which means that I have clips that I have ready for this, and uh, so yeah, let's go. Go on, man. Get the, get the final shot. These sunglasses. These are the most square-edged sunglasses I've ever seen. They're not aviators, and they're not the Terminator 2 ones. They're just some sort of, like, if you go to the eye doctor and you got your eyes dil diabated, di dil dilated? Yeah, dilated. You get your eyes dilated. These are the type of fakes, the shitty sunglasses they give you at the doctor's office. Sit down. Oh, wow, dude, you're so cool. I know. My mom thinks I'm what I'm wicked, mate. My mom thinks I'm wicked, mate. <laughs> All right, scopes and hose. Scopes and hoes and scopes. And oh, gotta have me my boots and hose. Gotta get me some of them scopes and hoes. This game is 930 years in the future. Why does reloading matter? Reloading, I think, matters because from because the first word in that sentence. What was it? This game. Yeah, the second word in the sentence. Game. It is a game, even though it is 930 years in the future. Why does reloading matter? Reloading, I think, matters because from a player perspective, it makes you think ahead of the combat that you're about to go into. Because it's part of a classic FPS experience. I think it adds... Remember, if anybody actually wants a real a thousand year in the future, you know, portrayal of how space combat and flight and gun combat and stuff will work, just go watch The Expanse and then think about an MMO in that universe and how boring it actually would be. To the tactical element of gameplay, thinking on the fly, and it's also quite satisfying to reload weapons. I, I find it satisfying anyway.
that situation you're going to put yourself into, it feels a bit more immersive. We obviously have a bit more of a complex system with our magazines. So we obviously have magazines on the suit, and we also have magazines in your backpack. So the new reloading feature to reach from the backpack. You need to make sure that these magazines are as full as possible. So we are making you think ahead about the combat situation that you're going to go into. So for Alpha 323, um, reloading is kind of two parts. Uh, first, you've got your backpack reloading, and then you've got your ammo repooling. So backpack reloading solves uh, a problem where, for example, you find yourself in a situation in a combat, and you need to reload, but you... And here's the thing is that I think this is great. It's a solid in-between solution to a problem that they could have gone full-blown Tarkov with. Like, they could have literally have made you... any spare mags on your suit. They could have literally made you open up your inventory, go to your stack of bullets, and then manually pack each one individually. Or, like, you know, pull out a charge handle and then, you know, rev the counter on your battery for your energy rifles, right? So, uh, the fact that we don't have... And that's the problem with Tarkov is that, okay, well, now you have your armor-piercing bullets. And now you have a stack of, like, you know... Um, uh, like, uh, bleeding bullets that split out and do, you know, uh, more bleed damage. And then you have, you know, the 9 by 19 round, which has 20 different fucking, you know, different ammo types for it. And all of that just bloats the game. It is cool, and it is realistic to how there are that many different types of ammo IRL. But in a game environment, again, the second word of that sentence, game, you get a bunch of bloat. And nobody uses, like, 90% of the 9 by 18 rounds in Tarkov anyways they use like two or three different ones and that's it what you have in your backpack what you can do now is pull additional magazines from your backpack at the cost of an increased reload time it was just filling up a lot of your inventory so we basically decided with um, backpack reloading that we wanted to kind of condense that gameplay and just do it more on the fly it is These camera remote, shots are but great. It takes a little bit longer. It's going to play a very simple animation. So the combat flow isn't broken, but you still need to think ahead because this long reload duration can be painful in the combat if you're not careful. Because we really want to incentivize players to think about when they're going into combat, what they need to think about, how much of magazines they want to keep on them and how much they want in their backpack. The last thing you really want to do is pull out, you know, open a UI and pull out magazines from here and move them across there. This allows you to keep in the combat, in the action, without having to go through inventory menus. You will be able to see how many magazines on your suit and how full they are, and a backpack icon if you have magazines on your backpack. And if you see no magazines icon but a backpack icon, then you'll understand that the next reload you're going to do is going to be a backpack reload. So it keeps you in the flow, but it forces you to wait a little bit. The punishment of not preparing yourself is still there, but it's lighter, it's more forgiving. It's a good solution. So with repooling, the idea being that if it, you've got... It's a great solution to a problem that exists in the game. They're not making more problems because of it, which it would be you know, adding ammo and then having to pack the mat and then that's a whole extra stuff like no just an extra bit of time when you're pulling from the backpack you can still load from your backpack solves all problems lots of let's say we take a 30 mag uh, ballistic magazine let's say you've got 15 15 15 you've got three half empty magazines the idea being is you just hit a key binding the animation will play like a rummage and basically those magazines will condense down into full magazines and then automatically discard the empty ones as a result Great, great feature. Can't wait for this. The thing is, though, is I want, I hope that they balance it to where, like, I don't know. Do you guys think they should balance it to where if you have, like, 20 different magazines with different varying size, it takes 20 seconds to sort them all? Whereas if you had five mags, it takes five seconds? Or do you think it should just be, like, a blanket seven seconds no matter what you do if it's two magazines or 20? What do you guys think? How would... Because obviously that's going to be a big choice decision as far as how actual combat and gameplay goes. Of this process, you will save your. One of those ways is very good for a PVE single player environment. The other one would have huge ramifications for actual tactics between PVP and other players. So, your precious suit item ports, and then you will have your ammo condensed into your fuller magazine, so you're ready to unleash their full potential onto your, your enemies. UI. So with our new UI display hoods. Yep, see a little backpack, and then it pulls from the backpack 
that went from like whatever 105 to 75. We got looks a good. Number looks number good. Of bullets in your magazine. And then we've also got a number of your combined bullets. On okay, here's the one thing that I don't like, and I hope they get rid of it, is see how there's one, two, three, four ghosted numbers on this panel? I hate that. I'm already playing in VR, and I have a shimmer effect on all the edges of all the objects anyways, due to how it's trying to reproject 3D at me. I don't need extra shimmers in the UI to cloud up everything and make it foggy. This is just a VR complaint, so you're literally only going to hear it from the VR users, but, like, can we just please make clean, clean UI? I, like, I don't want it ghosting on top of itself. A number of them. And, like, all of this, too. Like, all of these letters. Why does this need to be ghosted? I, I really don't see the reason for it. That's in your magazine. And then we've also got a number of your combined bullets on your total player. And duration of this operation is going to depend on how much ammo you're shifting around and the type of ammo that you're shifting around. Duress, duration after separation. It's a good name for a band. So reporting pistol magazines is going to take a different amount of time than reporting rockets, for example. That means that we're spending less time in the inventory screen and more time actually in game play. This all will be in 323, but after that, we will be looking into throwables and consumables. So you will be able to report your grenades and your med pens, and there are still a couple of unclear points about some weapons. For example, multi-tool and its salvage canisters. We're still exploring what options we have over there. So recoil is part of the identity of the weapon. Recoil is good. You need recoil. What the hell? What the hell? I'm just now noticing this guy's eyeliner and mustache. Mustache? Dude, look at the handlebar on that guy. And he's got the Karen hair that's like pink. I'm colorblind, but what the? This is a tease of the character creator, isn't it? For next week. And it will also allow players to express their skill in a certain way. We have different kinds of recoil, very subtle recoil and very wild recalls and depending on that you can paint an image of either this is a very harsh very very aggressive assault rifle or a very gentle pistol maybe even with a silence on top of it when i've been watching citizen con and we showed the new recalls one of the biggest feedbacks was those are laser weapons they don't have recoil Oh God! If if I see one more form post about like why do laser guns not well why why don't laser guns have recoil? It drives me up the wall. Well, yeah, they shouldn't have recoil. It's a laser gun. Laser weapons. In you the should first have to be worried about battery capacity and overheating. Really unrealistic with laser weapons. for themselves, right? There are no big laser projectiles that come out of weapons, so giving them recoil is very sensible for a game. I think getting rid of recoil in that sense is just boring gameplay. It's fun. It needs to be in there. You know, you need a challenge when shooting people. You need a challenge when tracking people. I think you need recoil in order to balance the game and make it fun for everybody. You'll yeah, agree. The laser weapon shouldn't have recoil. If anything, it should be like... Because you want a laser weapon to be like an FPS weapon and shoot like bullets. But at the end of the day, what a laser weapon should be is a beam that you hold down and use to melt things, not just a blast. But Star Wars basically, you know, said that, well, lasers operate like a machine gun, so get over it. <laughs> See, in 322, we put the new procedural recoil in, and it looks mint, I think, personally. Uh, the weapons now use our entirely new procedural system. And the nice thing about the procedural system is, it means that we can basically have shot-to-shot -shot differences be massive. So you'll see when you fire the P4 now, it can basically be an entirely different bit of your screen than it was in the previous shot. Whereas before, we had a very linear motion. Imagine before the recoil would essentially go like this on your camera. But now it can be, you know, kind of doing this all around the place. Far more aggressive, nice. and the overall feeling of it is like, oh my god, this is actually a gun. So some of this still haven't is in sniped yet for... and some more is coming in. I still haven't done any sniping in VR for obvious reasons that we will show. In 323. So, so all right, this is what we want. Scopes and hose, baby. We're finally here. Pull the sniper rifles. 
These are going to have uh, the majority of the side probes will have the new procedural recoil, and the majority of the pistols will yet, have the new yet. procedural recoil. So you'll see some of the pistols. Their their personality will have changed a little bit, but their functionality will still be the same. And you'll see the snipers basically feeling a lot more powerful and angry, as we've seen with the other weapons that have had their passes. And with the new recoil system, this just feels like a real weapon, and it feels like this, this thing just has impact, right? You know, you want your weapon to feel angry. If the weapon is just stable and still on the screen, you'd be like, oh, this feels pants. So we have not only just scopes, we have a whole new suite of iron sights. All right, here we go. This is it, scopes and hose. For the majority of our weapons. So what this has done is we've essentially got stuff that has raised the camera upwards and given a better target acquisition window. This is obviously with a lot of sci-fi guns. They're very chunky. They're very kind of fat, which is just how a lot of sci-fi things are. So naturally, we've managed to improve upon this by saying, hey, you've still got that fat chunkiness, but we've raised the camera up and we've managed to make this, the sight line cleaner for your, for example, your kind of rifle. This is a problem in Tarkov too, is that some of the guns with a, depending on what scope and other bull crap you have bolted onto the sides of it, the gun just takes up so much area and screen space that you can't see behind it to track players and, you know, look at your environment. So the fact that they've used, that they've uh, raised the sights on some of them and lowered the gun so that it's a lot more cohesive the scope side of on things, your screen. We've basically overhauled how they work. So. All right, here we go. Scope overhaul. Here we go. Previously, if you were looking at anything that is, you know, an eight times. All right, so I'm going to let them talk and then them show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to actually show you what it looks like. Because be only VR players and maybe head tracking people will know what I'm talking about. It's going to have a black border around the actual scope bit itself. But now that is gone. The graphics guys did an amazing job at implementing the shaders for these, so the scopes just look way more realistic than they used to be. Nice reflections and a parallax effect. This is something different. Just a gorgeous view. I can't wait for you guys to see them. It's probably the most exciting thing for me personally, 323. So I'm not sure if they've actually gotten rid of the shader and put in an, a, a realistic IRL scope on the top of the weapon, or if they've improved the shader to just look better. But this is what it, I go through right now as a VR player with head tracking and scopes, so let's, All let, right. let's let past me take it away for just a moment in time. All right, this will be perfect. I can make this little clip now. All right, all right. So, uh, as Future Chachi says, we need to demonstrate what I see as a VR player currently through a scope. So, with that said, um, I can move my mouse like this, ADS, right, like everyone else. But I also have head tracking on top of this. So I'm not sure how this works with for people with head tracking at the desktop, if they get the same thing as those with VR. But first of all, I need to zoom in and actually set it to full VR mode. So this is what you see on my desktop. This is what I see in my headset. Okay. And with a scope, what they mean by... The planar view is that on the desktop, you just see the scope, but, but with head tracking, I can literally look around it. And what does this look like if I zoom out in my headset and what it looks like on the desktop with all of this? Well, basically, what it means is that with any big long zoom scope, there's this big old black border around it. But that black border is literally just hanging in space around the gun and I can look off of it. This also means is that currently, I hope that they change this too, but I don't know how they're gonna do that because they also have shown a zoom feature. So we'll have to see how that gets into our hands. But I also need to figure out my USB plug issues. I think if I get my Go XLR into its own USB 3.0 port and nothing else next to it, then it shouldn't make the, my audio keeps dropping and cutting out for like just one or two milliseconds all the time. And I can't, I've had that problem for months. And I think I might have maybe figured it out, but I think I need to get like a better USB port solution for my, for everything. But when I also did that I, the other weekend after uh, cleaning out my PC and blowing it out with air, I lost all of my controls for my goddamn HOTAS setup for Star Citizen. So yeah, I'm wary to do that. Anyways, the like, man talk. I have like binocular vision, so I can look over there and 
can just, you know, while holding down ADS with head tracking, I can that freaking audio. You hear, you could just hear the audio cuts, just, just time, and it's probably doing it right now on this recording too. But scope literally wherever I want to, and so I hope that they change it to where it's just an actual scope. Then, then it just mounts or it just rests your head. Here, hang on. So with the regular gun, you can ADS right. You can move your head around the gun. So I hope that it just moves your cheek onto the back of the gun and then you look down the scope and that it doesn't give you actually zoomed in vision because I want to be able to look around like this. But I have to solve my audio popping issues. I have to figure that out this next week. But I don't think that has been plaguing me for years. That's going to happen because even with a two times scope compared to a one, and it's not like it's popping. I just I lose like a millisecond of audio. I don't understand. I don't know if it's a VR or Go XLR issue. Get a bit of zoom. So yeah, that's how scopes work now, and how they're going to be working in the future. And I'll take it back to future Chachi. Thank you for doing the voodoo that you do. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow him. He works really hard. All right, cool. Thank you, past Chachi. I'll take it from here. So, as you guys saw, like with VR users, if they still have this zoom effect, and it's not just a lay your cheek down on the thing and then look through the scope that is given a zoom effect, then that will still give us the problem of binocular vision whenever we ADS, or no, whenever we ADS and then move our head off of the actual gun. Like, I, I, like, I don't know if there's going to be a way to fix that for VR players, but... We might just, you know, be able to cheat like that and scope up looking down at the floor and then binocular vision 12 times or 16 times or 24 times off into the distance. Now, you might think to yourself, wow, that seems like an incredible advantage. Not. Look, try to use a tele... Close one eye, put a telescope next to the other, and then try to look at a telephone pole halfway across town. You're never going to be able to get pinpoint precision without lining it up first and then zooming in. Like, try to put binoculars up to your face and look around as everyday vision. You're never going to do it. If you look through the scope, you actually see the scope inside. And depending on if it's a holographic scope, a telescopic scope, or a TV screen scope, the shape... So it's still definitely giving a zoom effect from this, from what I can tell. But the scope itself, it, we don't have that black border issue, so that's nice. That will look different as well. And then here's this thing that we have an extra zoom mode too, which I don't know how that's going to operate in VR. And then we took it and brought it to basically every scope, adjusted the shader so that it looks nice on that particular scope, and so added it a is few still other a functionalities to scopes as well. For example, we will have multiple zoom levels on scopes. Currently, we just have eight times zoom, but in the future, for 3.23, we will be able to have eight times and 16 times zoom or two times and four times zoom. And because our new recoil is a lot more aggressive and dynamic, it means that the reticle is moving as you'd expect on screen relative to where the actual barrel is. So not only does it help... Yeah, the little smart reticle, that's going to be pretty with cool. With the new procedural recoil, it also helps with the believability of the optics as well. So I think the whole scope experience or ADS experience with scopes is just going to get better from here on. There's no way it could be any worse than it is right now, VR or otherwise. I just hope that the systems in place in the future just don't make it suck for VR users. Because <laughs> it'd be kind of hard to redesign all of that later, you know. And the idea, from what I'd seen, like the fact that they have 60 OF head tracking and all this other stuff that just works whenever you put third-party third party VR mods onto Star Citizen, how f well they work together with the engine leads me to believe that they've made deliberate decisions in the background to make sure that when they add VR to the game, it will be as easy as possible and there will be as little reworking needed. So, that's why I'm able to, you know, say and talk about it like this. Dynamic Crosshair and why I'm hoping that all of that comes to fruition. 323. Dynamic Crosshair is it's in the name, it's a crosshair. But the good thing about our crosshair is it's a little more futuristic. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I love it. Say it a little bit more sci-fi. And it makes sense, and I think they say that it only works with combat helmets, so you have to have specific type of helmets with a display on them. So in 323, when you equipped a combat visor, you will have a dynamic crosshair on your screen. This follows the barrel of the gun, which is really cool because if you're reloading and you pull the gun up like that, the crosshair will actually go off screen like that. 
So it fits into the aesthetic of Star Citizen because it's grounded in the context of where the barrel actually is, which is really cool because if you've got a pistol which shoots a bit more up like this, it actually fo follows it as you would expect. Previously, you were always kind I of love point it. shooting. It looks and good. And it causes a problem in not knowing how big your crosshair actually is for your weapon. So we had to make the, the spread on the weapons a bit smaller than usual because if you're going to point shoot, you have the issue of like, where is my bullet actually going to go? This allows us to say, hey, this is actually kind of what your, you know, your cone of spread is, and we can increase the spread values of weapons themselves, which leads to better gameplay and people actually focusing on ADSing down sights, even in like 10 meter engagement ranges. And it also just gives that player a little bit of extra information. So when you're hiding behind a wall or um, you're close to uh, proximity with an object, the crosshair is actually going to let you know if you're going to hit the object or if you're going to shoot past it. I heard people saying this is unrealistic. I'm fairly certain we can do this with our technology today, so 900 years in the future shouldn't be a problem to have at least military tech to have this crosshair component to them. It's a crosshair that not only fits the aesthetic of Star Citizen, but cleanly fits into what you'd expect for Star Citizen as well. We are able to deactivate it, so if you don't like it, there's a menu option for you. You can also disable the new hit markers independently of mm -hmm, the crosshair. Mm -hmm. So if you just prefer to keep the hit markers, you can keep them. If you prefer to keep the crosshair and not the hit markers, you can do that as well. So being able to customize, that's very nice for those people who hate that type of thing, but I think it's going to be cool. And you can fill And will make Star Citizen feel different from other FPS games, so, but what do I know? Fully utilize it to make it your own, what you want from the game. So you can have it completely off or on. And then we have things like obviously updated hit markers. And we also have a final hit red X as well to let you know that you've confirmed that kill. It's a completely optional feature, but I think you're gonna like it. So I think the reason why I'm so excited and the team is so excited about why these new changes to FPS are gonna be so dynamic and, and completely change the game is I just think it makes our game so much more modern. It makes it so much more lively uh, and really expressive. Now weapon manufacturers are going to have much it's more pyro. of a unique brand to them. And the same with, the, uh, with our new amazing scopes. You know, if you compare the scopes that we have now uh, to what we have coming in 3.23, it is going to be completely, I think, game-changing. There's, uh, there's, we're obviously going to do... Th they're, they're showing off. Do you see that again? They're showing off the... He's got mascara on. He's got a beard. I think game-changing. Like, they're showing off that... They're really, really teasing the uh, new character creator hard uh, this We're obviously going to do things in the future, like when we get wear and tear in, apply wear and tear to when you shoot those things, because we still want that to be, be a believable experience. Bullet blocking is an issue. It will literally be gone from like grenades and magazines and everything like that. So even backpacks. So people previously would have to shoot people in the legs if they wanted to consistently land shots, which is a problem because realistically, that's not a good feeling of like, I'm behind you, I have to shoot you in the legs. So I can focus on shooting you in the chest now. We really like the fact that the crosshair is basically kind of starting the whole archetype for armors. So as we move down into the P, this P4 AR scope, how it sits so high, this is really good. Like it's way, way higher with these little prongs. Yeah, you we get want our armor set. A lot less weapon in your field of view. That's to become uh, more specific to their needs. If you look at our game, half of this is basically FPS combat, and these improvements will bring the FPS combat to AAA standard and make it feel like. A yeah, more polished experience. It's not something that you can put into words, but something that will, yeah, that you will appreciate while playing our game. And I hope all of these changes make your time in the verse more fun. I think this just is so much more about gameplay. It's less about getting bogged down in menus. It's more about on the action. And it also integrates so amazingly with our HUD. A fluid experience, which is what we're aiming for. Which is what again, we, you know, again, look at that. Look at this guy. Amazingly, with our HUD. A fluid experience, which is... Look at that mascara. <laughs> it's the same guy with this what beard. Rainfall, which is what and the purple hair. We, you know, really want to deliver. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> oh, I have to get the microphone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, what did we learn this week? 
No, you do, probably no. can't do this. No, now. you're gonna have to take it off. <laughs> we learned that procedural recoil system reaches all FPS weapons in Alpha 323. That the dynamic crosshair will enable some occasional hip fire goodness. That new scopes means better ways to refund your enemies' lives. And that reloading changes means more of the pew pew and less of the few few. Sometimes I hate me too. For Inside Star no, Citizen, you. I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. For the character customizer. Hello there. Wonderful. Good episode. So yeah, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think, and thank you for doing the voodoo dun, dun, that you do. Dun, 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 dun,